What's up, guys? Welcome back to MDLNA Qualifiers. We've got Complexity taking on GoPro. This is the new and maybe improved Complexity? I don't know. It's only their first game so far, and they did win it, so 100% success rate. Literally best team in Dota right now. They're going to take on GoPro again, guys. It's just going to be a very simple double bracket. Try to get into the playoffs. It's all for seeding. Which I, last seconds, time I cast MDL, remember. I was completely wrong. So, if, yeah, if you guys remember that, I apologize. But Five pretty much seconds, play for remember. seeding, then go for playoffs. So, I mean, the games, uh, you, you'll win them, you'll lose them. It's not really going to kick you out, at least not in this stage. I'm Mike Lewis, going to be a caster for this here at Game 2. Uh, you guys should also check out the other stream, which has, uh, I think, EG versus someone. Got Grant and Kyle, formerly of Complexity, on that one. I think we also have an emergency stream up because Opti Optic, God, can't English. Remaining. Optic versus Hooked is being played right now as well, and uh, the winner of this match is going to play remaining. the winner of that match over here as the next game. There's a hell of a lot of Dota, guys, so you have your pick. Multi-Twitch is a thing. You should definitely be using that. Uh, you know, just, just mute whichever one you don't want to listen to. Which is probably going to be this one because, you know what? There's nothing valuable to hear here. I'm, I'm going to be honest, guys. Uh, but this draft is also going incredibly glacially slow. we got ET, got Bounty Hunter being banned out. Uh, you know, we get some pretty huge powerhouses. Kind of surprised that there was just no mention of Tusk in the last game. They'll go for the Disruptor. They'll go for the Tusk. Oh, there you go. Turns out Tusk is actually a really, really good hero. Uh, and along with Disruptor, it does give you quite a few options. You're really, really good at limiting space here on the GoPro side. Obviously, you have the shards to wall off passages and whatnot. The field kind of does the same thing. Remaining. So with this opening, GoPro do have heroes that can Five enable these other long-range heroes. These heroes that are really uh, dependent on keeping space in these fights in order to do their damage. I think probably the best example of that is Shadow Fiend, a hero that if you give him a little bit of space, thanks to a good shard block or put the enemies in a cage for him and he's going to be able to obliterate them. Heroes like Terrorblade, heroes like Sniper. Uh, you know, these are the heroes that really work well with this setup from GoPro. But Complexity, not to be scared of that. They'll go for the Rubik first pick, which I don't quite like in general as much as someone like a Bane first pick. I think Bane is the 100% uh, support pick. But, uh, you know, Rubik can definitely get the job done. They'll go for the Nature's Prophet as well which is uh, definitely an interesting way to go. The Five hero is going to be not completely safe already. I mean, teleportation in as a reinforcement tool is always nice, although it's significantly less nice going up against a disruptor because you just get yanked back to your lane and then, you know, sometimes you die because of that. But you know what? It happens. There is going to be a non-zero amount of kind of seeking coming out here from the GoPro 4 position in the Tusk. Perhaps is not the best hero at finding a nature's profit and getting on top of them. Uh, probably Clockwork, Earth Spirit. Like These are just the better heroes at doing that. But uh, what GoPro really don't have with these two supports is any sort of relevant AoE. Shards will not kill off a wave of treants and a wave of creeps. Uh, Thunderstrike at level 4 does a lot of damage. But like by the time Thunderstrike is level 4, the game's like 30 minutes in the game. So it doesn't matter. So as far as being pushed, they really do have to watch Five out for that Nature's Prophet. Remaining. Go really aggressively towards him or pick up a little bit more AoE because certainly GoPro are ill-prepared at dealing with a mass push strat coming out for Complexity, at least with their opening two picks. But again, that's not really what these picks are for. They're about providing space for a, another long-range damage dealer, a little bit more oriented towards Radiant those lanes in the super early game where Tusk is debatably like the best hero. I would say probably the top 10 easily uh, as far as making plays in the early game just because shards are such a ridiculous tool. It is going to be complexity with this opening of heroes that Ten don't really have any options remaining. of counterplay. They'll just kind of sit there and take it, try to minimize their losses. Uh, with the Rubik, remaining. I don't really know if they can make any equally offensive plays elsewhere. Just inherently not the most offensive hero. and uh, They'll even take out the Sand King, which is a great hero to have versus Nature's Prophet. For sure from GoPro, but you know, this is kind of the type of hero that Complexity would like to have on their own side. Giving those stuns, kind of punishing that Tusk commitment in with the Snowball with a quick Burrow Strike is definitely one of the better ways to go about it. Radiant Life Stealer banned out, Bat Rider being taken out. Look at all this protection that Complexity are giving to that Nature's Prophet. I don't really know why Moo's wearing the Drafting Crown here. 
I'm pretty sure that, like, for most teams, that doesn't mean he's calling the shots, but maybe he is. Uh, either way, I mean, Nation Prophet is really well protected with these bands. Go for now, pick up the Phantom Lancer. I mean, it's not really like a... I don't know versus Nature Prophet. I don't know if it's like a bad or good hero. It seems like it's a very 50-50 matchup. Like, Nature Prophet can do a lot worse versus the Phantom Lancer, early game pressure-wise. Uh, Nature Prophet will fold in the fights, but it's like there's a lot of push-pull there. Ultimately, it's, it's not like a huge counter or anything like that. The puck pick for Complexity is kind of letting their draft take a little bit of shape here. It looks like they want to be very, very evasive in these engagements. Just some uh, really, really ratty gameplay coming out for complexity. And that's where Phantom Lancer actually isn't that terrible. You're able to shove the waves really quickly, especially if you do have a Manta style. Like the, having kind of persistent illusions in those waves, giving them momentum, really works well up against this type of style. Tuscan Disruptor are kind of trash at dealing with this, which really sucks. But uh, Complexity looking to, at least from what it seems, just avoid fights as much as possible. While well, at the same time, picking up this puck will give them perhaps one of the most resistant heroes possible versus that tusk. Because every single time you try to gank a puck, try to snowball him, it won't hit, man. It will not hit. And if you do land the snowball, land the shards, he'll just hop right over them. So as far as a strict early game counterplay measure, the puck's where it's at. And of course, it's going to give them initiation, give them that uh, really, really hard crash in. Maybe not versus that Phantom Lancer in particular, whose doppelganger kind of just is just going to beat Coil every single time. But you know what? You have those options versus everyone else on GoPro. Uh, Legion going to be a Legion Commander. Interesting. The Legion Commander, definitely a uh, hero still being picked up from GoPro. Just, wow, okay, it's a Drow Ranger lineup. I did not see that one coming, honestly. But Legion Commander, you know, it's mostly a hero versus that Nature's Prophet. That's why they picked it up, because, hey, they have LC, they have a Nature's Prophet. We're going to pick up an LC. We're going to be really happy in doing so. It does open up their lanes quite a bit, but now this Drow Ranger is going to make things a little bit awkward here for GoPro. This is a situation where Complexity do have that push power, which is, at this point, kind of answered thanks to that Legion Commander, but still they have it in the creeps, and they will have it in just raw right-click as well, forcing GoPro... To come to them and they don't really have the best ways of doing that at least not safely uh, of course when you do have that blink duel that's like an incredible way maybe even the best way at dealing with that draw ranger you turn off her agility at the very worst and in that duel the draw ranger because she doesn't have that extra agility can't gust you back she is going to take a lot of damage if not straight die to you Five so they will have that working for them this legion commander is looking like she's in a pretty good spot but for complexity, they're looking for... Mm, interesting, that Beastmaster ban. That would have been really, really powerful with Drow Ranger, but I'm not really sure if there's room in the lanes for that. What, like, what would be like a support Nature's Prophet or something like that? That would have been really, really weird. I'm not really sure where that ban's coming from right now. But uh, yeah, GoPro just needs to have a little bit more of initiation. A little bit of an easier way to get on top of that Drow Ranger. The Venomancer will be taking down kind of that defensive hero Radiant once uh, Complexity are looking towards that high ground. As now the Underlord is going to get picked, so Complexity, or GoPro rather, definitely knows something that I don't. Because uh, <laughs> usually you don't see this type of uh, lineup from Complexity. Drow Ranger lineups. I don't want to say that they're uh, outdated at this point, but they're very, very Ten niche. Seconds, really? I will say, however, that Underlord is a hero that I don't really much care for. Five he seconds, is incredible three. here. He's going up against Legion and Phantom Lancer, so taking out their base damage is going to be absolutely nuts. And Wait, Underlord... Oh, no, DK from GoPro? I don't like that DK. But uh, Underlord is a hero that is at his absolute best when you're looking for early game timings. Usually that's not going to be with a Drow Ranger, but if it is, man, he is a hero that will more than happily pick up stuff like Guardian Greaves, pick up stuff like Crimson Guard, these really, really powerful aura-based items. At the same time, he's able to just completely obliterate creep waves, meaning split push is even easier. Plus, you have that emergency backup plan. There are many, many drafts where we see Underlord, and it's like, okay, they also have a Dark Rift on top of their plan. And it's kind of just like another asset that they have on the side. But this seems like it's a little bit more of a centerpiece of the complexity draft. Because now they can kind of just suicide race for towers, and with a Drow Ranger in their lineup, they will most certainly win those races. Drop low and then have that emergency backup. Even if they don't get the tower, 
They can use the Drow Ranger's full health pool, use everyone's full health pool, hitting towers instead of getting into fights because they have that instant disengage. There is going to be the concern that, hey, someone might get glimpsed back, and that is going to happen from time to time. But the Underlords escape. Letting Complexity Suicide die for towers is going to be so, so powerful. Of course, the question is, what's going to happen here? Z Freak is going to be playing that NP as support. Kitrak playing that Rubik. Other than that, just a little bit of a lane swap up, but nothing too out of the ordinary. We'll see what Z Freak's able to do. Does have that Orb of Venom. Does have, as a support hero, not terrible bulk. 584 armor is pretty good. Damage is actually pretty darn high, especially with this Orb of Venom. Adding a little bit more on top of the already 62. I guess 64. 62 plus 2 is 64. Holy shit. We are solving some serious bit issues here, guys. But, uh, yeah, I mean, his, his attack range is pretty good. 600. I say pretty good. That's it's really good. Uh, you can do a lot of poking as an extra profit. Though your level income will be much, much lower. And that, that's the real downside. Uh, going on to this DK now. Uh, it is going to be the last pick here for GoPro. It is going to be a hero that is very, very difficult for Complexity to deal with. Simply because even though they do have heroes that are good at poking, DK doesn't give a shit about any of that. So it's really going to be difficult locking him down early on. So that is going to work really well for GoPro. The problem is that DK isn't really the type of hero who will get on top of a Drow Ranger and really make her scared. The best thing you can do is Dragon Tail her and then hit her a couple times. You're not going to kill her. Like, you just don't have that ability. You will do a lot of damage reduction with that Breathe Fire, so that yes. might be pretty useful. Is that going to be... Okay, it's 2-2 Bad Rune. This Breathe Fire is definitely going to be nice. A limited amount of AoE to deal with Complexity. I just think that DK doesn't have quite enough punch here, nor enough initiation power. Now, in a situation where Husky is able to get nuts out of control, pick up a really early Shadow Blade, then things might look a little bit different. But uh, I'm not really sure how feasible that's actually going to be, considering how aggressive Cole are trying to be. Let's take a look at this top lane because it's going to be boring as hell. It's going to be Moose Underlord going up against Spinabix, Legion Commander. Lots of hits being traded, but ultimately no one's going to be super concerned for their life. Over in mid lane, kind of the same exact thing. Hits being traded, no one's going to die because lol, DK doesn't care. DK has good matchups everywhere. It's in this bottom lane where things can get really interesting. We already see a little bit extra damage thanks to this Marksman Precision Aura. Marksmanship is this one. Thanks to that precision aura. Plus three is whatever, man. <laughs> I, can, I can take or leave plus three. I think I'm pretty sure they'll uh, take it or leave it also. But uh, you do have that with three three heroes on the poke side of things. You can see save. Just walked right in. Got his ass kicked. And of course, having these treants as well. 36 damage isn't a lot, but it adds up really, really quickly. This is the concern, though. Having all these ranged heroes typically means that you are very susceptible to just being caught and picked off. Although, again, Nature's Prophet Bulk, not that bad. He will be able to shrug that one off. He is using these Treants as just an extension of himself, just to right-click more supports, just to be more annoying, and just add that chip damage up. Starting to burn through these restoratives very, very slowly, granted, but starting to do so nonetheless. Again, this is not really the best situation for Nature's Prophet in a vacuum. This is what's best for the team. Because NP right now, only level 1, will have no teleport. And will not have a relevant amount of teleport kind of support potential until much, much later in the game. But, you know, you see the chip damage certainly adding up there. And that is going to let Chessie... I was going to say get some CS, but uh, Drow Ranger CSing. Guys, ever try to CS as Drow Ranger? It's a freaking nightmare, man. Her attack animation is so bad. Like, how long does it take to pull a quiver out of an arrow? Wind Ranger has it down. I don't know why Drow Ranger can't seem to do it. Uh, it takes forever to pull that arrow out, and the projectile is so slow. Have I mentioned how I hate Drow Ranger's attack animation? It's so bad, but it's a hero that you absolutely cannot afford to miss CS with because she's all about these early game timings. Get those early stat items up, a couple of Wraith Bands, those Power Treads. You need to get that going, and oh god, he still is going in with that double damage? I just assumed DK backed up because like, okay, Limp has double damage, you don't challenge him, but... DK challenged him, and he died for it. Titor is all up in this stream. But holy crap, that should not have happened. Uh, I mean, no, double damage on Puck is really good, especially with these nulls. Like, you amp you double up a lot of that damage. So, plus 79. Pretty nuts. And, of course, at this point, a little bit of extra precision aura. I guess one level 1, so <laughs> not really all that great. But we do have the DK taking a spill over in that mid lane. Chessie's CS, though, is certainly not where he would like it to be. 
That is somewhat of a concern. You do have uh, Underlord and Puck who are free farming and then some. So even sh uh, should the Drow Ranger drop the ball a little bit, it's not going to be the end of the world. These two heroes can definitely pick up the slack and give that Drow Ranger a couple of time, a little couple minutes to get those yeah. items up at the end of the day. We'll still have that timing. But man, Mu is just bullying that Legion Commander. Still not able to keep her out of the creep wave. That's really just not going to happen. But with that aura, is going to be winning all these exchanges. Lift up on the Phantom Lancer now, but the Snowball immediately going to give him a lot of backup. Great gust from Chessy. Going to give Kitrak a little bit more space. Scourge going to have to doppelgang. Actually runs forward. And they'll clean up the illusion. But one more Lance will kill off that Rubik at the cost of perhaps save. Couple more right clicks. Not enough. No, it is enough. He dies in the fountain. Okay, I just saw him disappear and thought he was fine, but apparently not. That's going to be a one-for-one one in this bottom lane. Phantom Lancer does get himself out of there. Does grab an Invis Rune on top of that. And is able to pretty comfortably sit in the lane. Kit track, I'm not really sure where he's going. I tell you what, that's not the right place to go. He is going to throw the Phantom Lancer back onto the Disruptor. And no rush just yet means that there's going to be no chase. But we got Moo. Wow, he's just laying into this Legion Commander. A couple of extra heals and the Legion Commander will survive. Fight another day, but... A lot more hits being traded to the point of lethality than I really thought. Puck's starting to cut through these uh, raindrop charges on the DK. Will take quite a long time to, again, actually kill him. Even though he does have the coil, he'll drop it here. But I'm not really sure what Link can do. This, uh, oh, Breathe Fire is going to be dodged. Orb through is going to be mostly blocked again by that raindrop. But Z-Freak's now here. A little bit of extra bulk. Sprout leveled up as well. He's level 3. And he does get the kill in the end. How the hell did Nature's Prophet get to level 3? He was, like, barely level 2 earlier. Uh, he's level 3 now, so 1-1-1. One, one, one. That's all you need for some really hefty reinforcements. Should be level 2 aura, and it is. Chessy, though, in a little bit of trouble. He does have the gust. He will slip out of the shards and the field, and then straight TP out. Easy escape there from the Drow Ranger. Gust is really good against Snowball, by the way. Typically tend to clump up around this Snowballed target. And that means that it's super easy to land a Gust, pushes everyone away from that target, silences a whole bunch of heroes. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty quality. Dude, I'm going to miss someone dying in the top lane. I absolutely know it. I know it 100% that's going to happen. Sea Freak has picked up Baze Boots at this point. Jeez, where the hell did he get the gold? Did he kill off the DK earlier? Yeah, he, uh, he killed off Save, and he killed off Husky, so that's where he got the gold. So yeah, Baze Boots on Nature's Prophet. That's just a lot of damage, man. Like, phase for movement speed, whatever. You take it or leave it. But getting that plus 24 damage, that's where it's at. Uh, right now, he might need some movement speed, though. <laughs> or just the ability to teleport away. That's good, too. Z-Freaks can teleport up towards top lane, where it looks like the fight is already starting to brew on top lane. With four heroes converging on top. Binabic does have level 3 overwhelming odds, and that is going to be really nice if he can get it off without dying, of course. Save. going to get lifted up into the Firestorm. No, it's actually purged off. So he's not going to be thrown anywhere, but Moo, just by himself, just being Underlord, is allowed to do this. Because what's the worst that can happen? Well, a glimpse is the worst that can happen, but there is no glimpse, so lol, that's never going to happen. He's actually going to cancel it, and now the full fight actually is going to commence, as Binovic is going to get picked off, expecting no Underlord, but surprise, he's still here. Chessy just with one point in that Frost Arrow, can't quite catch up to that Tusk. Ice versus Ice apparently doesn't work all that well, but this is really where... Underlord starts to shine is where the atrophy aura is absolutely broken I'm assuming he's going to go for some of these early game aura based items as an underlord and This is only seven minutes in the game complexity walked in with four heroes took a kill and Walked away with the tower without losing really much of anything mid lane towers in impeccable shape bottom lane as well Of course, this is free farm for the phantom lancer where like he's not in any danger or anything like that uh, DK kind of the same thing but to take down their towers, that is so easy for Complexity to do and so, so worth it in the end. And let's see what the Underlord actually wants to go for. Thousand gold to his name. Most last hits in the game. Right behind his puck and net worth and even Drow Ranger. Starting to pick up some of that net worth as well with the Ring of Aquila, Power Treads. Pretty standard stuff from the Drow Ranger. I haven't seen Drow in a long time, though. I'm not really sure if people still go for uh, a lot of those Wraith Bands or just go for fatter items. It just depends on the tempo. Right now, it definitely seems like if you pick up Wraith Bands, it's not really going to be punished. Although, right now, 
Rotation going up towards top lane, smoked up with Frugos leading the way. Only one point in the glimpse. Uh, he's going to find Kit Track, but uh, I'm not really sure about this. They're going to snowball in towards Chessie. A great gust and a nice orb through three is going to give Chessie quite a bit of space for them all being coiled. They're all dropping really low. Chessie is doomed to fall. What trades could they find here? None? Really none. Okay, well, save gets out at 50 HP. They'll take down Chessie. Even with this coil, even with the gust, not quite enough. Yet, despite that, they do kill off the Dry Ranger. They have to deal with this bottom lane. You got two TPs coming in already. That's going to be the Disruptor. Pulls off the aggro of the real Creep Wave. And up from the top, it's going to be a double damage Legion Banner. It looks like they just ran out. She does have a duel, and she would love to duel someone like a Nature's Prophet right now, but not quite going to be there in time. Mid lane tower looks like it took a beating from the DK. Leave him alone for a couple minutes and your towers will just be cleaned up in an instant. Definitely concerned for complexity. But they're not really at a point yet where they're uh, going to start doomballing these lanes. Make no mistake, that is going to be their ultimate goal in this game. Sitting back, waiting for farm. That's how complexity uh, It's probably the best way for them to lose the game, actually. It's got to be all about that aggro. <laughs> And along those lines, here we go. Got the Helm of the Dominator, one of Moo's favorites. I feel like he gets this item on actually everyone. Didn't get it in the last game, despite being a Beastmaster where it's actually not that bad. But uh, he's going to get it this game. Definitely don't mind it. The attack speed aura, really, really nice when you have all of these units hitting for so much damage. What's it at right now? Plus 22, not bad at all. Just not even maxed out at this stage. Uh, Puck, Blink Dagger, some form of initiation from the complexity side of things. That's when the Doom Ball is going to start to really get rolling. GoPro have quite a... Uh, I mean, not that much time, I guess, but... They're going to be racing the clock, try to pick up their core items that will enable them to fight their core levels as well. This disruptor is only level 3. If you don't have the Static Storm by the time complexity are knocking on your front gate, man, you're going to be in for a world of hurt. That is going to be really, really bad. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Over in Botland, Legion Commander. Uh, she's going to get kind of pinned here. She does have the ability to purge off that route, and the Sprout's going to wall her off somewhat, but she just runs the opposite direction. Still, they are very persistent. Moose kind of giving chase. They have track coming in as well, but no disables in the area. Moose is going to sit there, like literally right in front of him. That was weird. But, oh, what, what the hell? They killed off Scourge. Z freaking limp. Once again, I botched the camera control. Kill off the Phantom Lancer up towards top lane. I feel like that shouldn't be happening because he has Doppelgang, but uh, Puck with no Blink Dagger just drops a coil and kills off a PL. Sure, why not? He's a little bit closer to Limp's Blink Dagger. He might get jacked up right before he has it, but no Static Storm means that it's going to be really difficult to actually do anything here. What level is the Glimpse? Probably not high enough for that. Bottom lane in the meantime, Moose once again shoving Radiant that one in. GoPro, even before the Radiant really aggressive part of Complexity's draft attack. comes together, seems like they're just being pulled apart in way too many directions. This bottom lane is just a constant threat. Mu by himself laying into it. Husky's gonna shape shift and try to take down this Seder. He will get it. It's 125 G's in the bank. It'll take a lot of damage for it, though. Lift it up. Hit should trigger twice here, and it will with so many right clicks. And the Firestorm landing almost every single wave, if not every single wave. That's some value right there. There's a level 4 ability that does percentage-based damage, and it's not physical. So, you know, screw you, Dragon Blood. You're not doing anything there. In the meantime, Chessie going to jump in with Limp onto this Tusk. Gust from long range should let Limp seal the deal, and it will. Limp's got him. Chessie's going to get right back onto that tower. In the meantime, Scourge does take down tower of his own. Moo's going to TP in, stick the landing with some help from Sea Freak and Kit Track. Moo is very durable right now. Fade Bolt bouncing through. This Underlord is going to take about no damage here. Minus 20 on the Legion Commander. Moo's just fine. Scourge dropping low in the meantime. And this Phantom Lancer is going to go down. Frugas not looking too hot either. Kinetic Field is stolen. Firestorm, two waves. Land on the Disruptor, trying desperately to escape. But now with Puck's arrival, they will zap him with the Fade Bolt. Off in the back, Bunabix trying to get out of there. It looks like he should be fine. But so much damage reduction here. Thanks to that Atrophy Aura. Thanks to some flat damage reduction from the Fade Bolt as well. You're looking at a hero that, once you're dueled, you're doing nothing but right-clicking. Literally, nothing but right-clicking. 
So, you know, when you're not doing any damage, that's just really difficult. Now he's gonna get coiled on top of it. The telekinesis, not quite gonna snap, but it doesn't matter, because he's super dead anyway, and now the push is gonna commence in earnest without even having a Drow Ranger here. Chessie is not needed because Complexity are just winning these fights so easily. Someone's got a Blightstone as well. I love this decision. Just a little bit of an armor swing onto these towers does add up. With this Wild Wing as well, get that plus three armor, making the creep wave that much more durable. And again, you know, once Chessie decides to actually start playing the game outside of giving everyone 34 damage, then how the hell are Copro supposed to fight that? Because they're really struggling to fight everyone, even without this Draw Ranger. Chessie working with third place net worth for complexity. It's really all about this Underlord, though. The fact that he is just Radiant seemingly unkillable right now. Gonna go for a Vanguard straight into Yules. The longer you can sit there with Atrophy, man, I mean, this is definitely one of those games where Atrophy Aura, as far as the damage increase, is going to stay relevant because of how aggressive Complexity are going to be. Whereas usually it's just like an extra bonus that you get. No, this Underlord is, again, going to be more of a centerpiece of this Complexity draft than in the vast majority of other games we see Underlord picked up in. Oh, Scourge reveals himself. Orb through is going to see him. He does have a TP out, but uh, Limp's just going to start right-clicking. And man, with that damage, thanks to that Jar Ranger, they're just going to right-click him down. Illusion Swarm, going to be getting cleaned up as well. Eventually, there we go. There's your plus 30 for you. How much is Limp actually hitting for? Jeez, 140 with Power Tread, so his attack speed is actually pretty good also. That is so much damage, like 110, 160, 67... 105 and limp is uh, beating them all just in the right click department and also doing more magic damage on top of that this is just a drow ranger draft through and through husky gonna pop the drum charge try to run but moo is gonna get in there just in the nick of time for the root onto the dk he's gonna be taken down at the same time disruptor is losing a lot of his life as well. They'll finish off both of them. Now checking forward for this Legion Commander. Just getting torn to shreds by the puck. Save as well. Being obliterated by Moo. Snowball makes them disappear because it's bugged as hell. Again, Ice Frog, please fix. That is just a straight visual bug. That is going to be four heroes dead. And Complexity, did they lose any health in that? I don't think they lost any health in that exchange. Like, at all. Plus 120 now up on that Underlord. Once he gets going, he is not going to be stopped. Especially once he gets the extra movement speed from that Yule Scepter. And he has the talent as well. Like, he is he is rolling, man. He is going everywhere. Radiant and everywhere includes into Roche with that plus 100 damage. This is the only guy who doesn't get the precision aura from Chessy. Clearly, it doesn't matter all that much. He has damage and then some. Tower down. Easy Aegis, eventually. There you go. Immortality. And now, now is about the time when Complexity are going to uh, hit their stride at this draft. This is their draft and their draft's timing at its strongest. With a 13k head start. <laughs> so yeah, good freaking luck, man. Shadowblade is now up in the Drow Ranger, so she's able to get free positioning. I'm going to jump in once again. This fan flinch, oh my god, she got destroyed by Limp. Another double damage pickup on this puck. I think there was a Wrath of Nature involved in that as well. Which should be Veiled? Not quite Veiled. Uh, is he going for Veil? I think Veil might be coming out to him soon. What's going on there, Puck? You got a lot of useless items here. But he's just going around assassinating people. Like, Puck usually isn't the type of hero to do that. It's because you lack the damage. But having a double damage rune seemingly on demand with the aura from the Jar Ranger, man, your damage problems are solved. Now they're going to rally around this Vanguard Underlord. Taking about no damage from this tower. tower DD still on the attack. puck, and this is really where it's like, okay, you have a DK. Now what? How the hell do you actually stop this? Of course, 16k in dispatches is not going to be a fair comparison. Stamstorm does drop on the puck with a duel on top of him as well, but the puck is just refusing to go down, just right clicking everyone. I mean, they do kill off the puck in the end, but it's going to cost them three euros. Now Scourge is going to have to doppelgang up the hill. We'll get up to safety, uh, relative safety. He's still going to be okay back onto the disruptor he's gonna be two shot no not quite worth the wrath of nature seals the deal from range and the tower is gonna fall the racks are gonna fall print this game in a textbook because this is the quintessential drow ranger draft uh maybe not actually maybe with the nature's profit support that's a little bit of a twist a complexity twist here lift up onto the phantom lancer he is gonna be fine a doppelgang by a little bit of an escape there but this is already a Rax down 18 minutes in. 
a clean retreat for complexity. Dark Rift, I mentioned how powerful that is in these type of drafts. Not even needed a single time, honestly. Like, he just uses it on this top lane before as, like, a baiting tool more than anything else. And now the items are going to be rolling in. An extra big health item at the very least for that Drow Ranger. That's all she needs. Just needs to stay alive so her allies do the damage. So she's got that going for her. Veil is up on the puck with another cool 34 hundo in the bank. Underlord has that Yule Scepter and he's just going to go to work on this Legion Commander. Dude, this Underlord gives no craps whatsoever. He's going to cancel the TP with the Yules. Like, he sees everyone coming into him. He knows this is like a 1v4. He doesn't care because Vinubik's dead already and Moo's taking about no damage. You can't stop this guy. He actually can't be stopped. Look how terrifying this is. Like, he's panicking on his Raptor, running away from this giant Underlord beast who's running at 410 movement speed, catches another Pyunt Husky, kills him off as well. And that's going to be a very one-sided stomp. My god. What is there to say about this game? I mean, again, the only, like, weird thing is that support Nature's Prophet. But worked out really, really well. Now, you can make an argument that, like, maybe some of these GoPro heroes, like, didn't quite pull their weight. We didn't really feel the impacts of a DK in this game. Phantom Lancer, you just got shat on by the puck every single time. But, like, those, uh, except for the DK, like, most of these picks from GoPro happened before that Draw Ranger pick, where I think they were still reasonable. They didn't end up being good. But I think you can't really blame them for making those picks because you don't expect to be put in the situation. Maybe it's those bans that really cost them. Maybe they just needed more of an aggressive start. Because we saw the uh, Tusk make... A couple of play attempts, but none really successful in this game. Simply because PL, Legion, DK, they don't really work the best with a Tusk. Again, I'm going to go right back to the textbook and say, you look at Tusk when he's partnered up with someone like a Shadow Fiend, you can do a lot of dirty things in the mid lane. Definitely think that DK was not the pick in the last, but GoPro just seemed like they were outclassed in this game. This is the epitome of Underlord also. Like, this is how you want to be playing Underlord if you can. Get that neutral lane matchup. Oh, I would say probably an advantageous lane matchup, but, you know, neutral at worst. Get a couple of early game aura-based items and then just ride Atrophy Aura to the win. If you can make that happen, man, you're sitting pretty. And this is really the awkward part where we have to check on the other stream, which I don't even know what it is. So, guys, uh, the way that the, uh, the MDL NA qualifiers are currently working is that there is another best of three being run on BTS3. The winner of that one, which is Optic versus Hooked, which is currently being played, uh, faces the winner of this game, Complexity, uh, probably like after a 10 minute break from the other matches ending. So I'm going to be chilling here, waiting for either Optic or Hooked, and we're going to be watching the winner's match afterwards. And that's going to be happening whenever the other match is done. So head on over to BTS3 if you want to watch the, uh, the winner of that one. You could also go to BTS2 for the other group where Grant and Melons or Kyle are still casting uh, someone. I, I don't really know who. Let's see who, who this who is this. What's going on here? Got DC versus VGJ Storm. They're still playing. Wow, that was a really long game too. All right, so yeah, they're in game three, and that's on the other group. Winner of that faces EG next. So that should be pretty good. But guys, I am done for right now, guys. I'll be chilling. We'll have the wait stream up. Head on over to the other BTS streams. Uh, there's going to be no Dota here until BTS 3 is done. I will see you guys then for Complexity versus someone. I don't know who. Could be anyone.